Hello everyone, this is Joshua Smith with Apollo's Artifacts. It is August 25th, 2017. The attacks on uh, free speech continue. They are uh, maddening and uh, very disturbing. I think um, everyone has seen how many websites are starting to get shut down. Of course, they always start with the worst of the worst violators to where most people say, well, it's about time they got rid of people like that, so on and so forth, but then it begins to spread. So you see Google involved in a lot of censorship right now. You see YouTube also involved in, in the same kind of censorship, uh, you know, being owned by Google. Of course, that's a natural effect. But I want to uh, talk about this in, in a deeper context. This is uh, not something new to humanity at all. And the persecutors that we have today actually are not all that different than the persecutors who existed back in the 17th century, for example. I've been reading a book lately called A Book Forged in Hell, Spinoza's Scandalous Treatise on the Birth of the Secular Age by Stephen Nadler. And uh, Spinoza, of course, was a philosopher, a rationalistic, naturalistic philosopher who had some pretty severe questions about the Bible, especially for his age. Now, uh, many of the questions uh, that Spinoza raised in specific about both the uh, Jewish Torah and the Bible had been asked before, but they had not been put forth so forcefully as Spinoza did. So Spinoza was um, often accused of heresy, licentiousness. He was uh, called an atheist. His views probably were closer to something like pantheism or panentheism, just depends on what, what technical way you want to approach that. But the effective view in his time was that he was an atheist. So uh, first he was actually uh, thrown out. He was, he was a Jew uh, by birth and upbringing, and uh, he was actually um, censured and um, excommunicated from his Jewish community. And um, let, me, let me read what was written about him in uh, July 1656, when he was but 23 years old. This is the uh, document about his uh, official censure and excommunication. The lords of the Mahmud, having long known of the evil opinions and acts of Baruch de Espinosa, have endeavored by various means and promises to turn him from his evil ways. But having failed to make him mend his wicked ways, and, on the contrary, daily receiving more and more serious information about the abominable heresies which he practiced and taught about his monstrous deeds, and having for this numerous trustworthy witnesses who have deposed and borne witness to this effect in the presence of the said Espinosa, they became convinced of the truth of the matter, and after all of this has been investigated in the presence of the Honorable Chachaming, meaning sages, they have decided, with their consent, that the said Espinosa should be excommunicated and expelled from the people of Israel. By the decree of the angels and by the command of the holy men, we excommunicate, expel, curse, and damn Baruch de Espinosa with the consent of God, blessed be he, and with the consent of all the holy congregation in front of these holy scrolls with the 613 precepts which are written therein, with the excommunication with which Joshua banned Jericho, with a curse with which Elisha cursed the boys, and with all the curses which are written in the book of law. Cursed be he by day, cursed be he by night, cursed be he when he lies down, and cursed be he when he rises up, cursed be he when he goes out, and cursed be he when he comes in. The Lord will not spare him. The anger and wrath of the Lord will rage against this man and bring upon him all the curses which are written in this book, and the Lord will blot out his name from under heaven, and the Lord will separate him to his injury from all the tribes of Israel, with the curses of the covenant which are written in the book of the law. But you who cleave unto the Lord God are all alive this day. We order that no one should communicate with him orally or in writing, or show him any favor, or stay with him under the same roof, or within four ells of him, or read anything composed or written by him. So I ask you, um, audience, how different is that from what we see going on today? Spinoza, who never considered himself to be an atheist, was lumped into the category of atheist by taking a naturalistic, rationalistic approach to the reading of the Torah and the Bible. 
So today we have the same kind of thing going on with the political left, saying that anyone who is to the right of them in any degree whatsoever is a white supremacist or a Nazi or a fascist. And they want to do the same thing. They want to excommunicate people. They want to expel people. They want to censure people. They want to silence people. They are the new um, holy group, if it, as it were. Those on the left have become the new Puritans. At least they are puritanical in their behavior and in their condemnation of anyone and anything that they don't like, anything that is less than what they approve of. And of course they're not puritanical in their personal behavior. They're often much more uh, libidinous or libertines or something like that. Not that I really care about that. But the point is, uh, it really is something that puts all of us in danger. We have seen uh, leftists trying to enforce their worldview by attacking people in the streets lately. We've seen them set a campus on fire, knock out windows, uh, attack people uh, with bike locks and all this other kind of stuff. And I think these outbursts may be indicative of where we are in the overall historical development of that particular approach. I think that it could be an indicator that the left is losing the debate. They're losing in the realm of ideas, uh, very much like uh, the, the religious types were losing in the realm of ideas in Spinoza's age. Uh, Spinoza had to uh, publish many of his works anonymously. People still eventually figured out who he was. I guess it was the uh, 17th uh, century version of doxing or something. They'd figure out uh, who he was, where he lived, where he worked, and all this other sort of stuff, harass him and everything else. And uh, the man suffered uh, incredible amounts of abuse. And uh, oddly enough, um, he, he's highly responsible uh, for so much that we have uh, today. He, he did set forth many of the foundations for the Enlightenment period, growing out of uh, the works of Descartes and Thomas Hobbes. But that's uh, beside the point right now. The point is uh, that, you know, he persisted. He fought through. He took whatever avenue he had to take to continue to get his ideas out there. So that's what we need to do as well. We use these platforms, YouTube, VidMe, podcasting, whatever it is you can do to continue to get the ideas out there. If they push back against them, you know, if they demonetize you, so be it. it. It's what is going to happen. You better be ready for that to happen from the get-go. And I do find it, uh, you know, a bit ironic that, you know, all throughout the, uh, you know, say the 1950s, all the way through the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, um, everybody had to hear all this stuff about, um, you know, they would make these comparisons between the Inquisition or the Salem witch trials, and they would compare that to how, you know, anyone on the political left was attacked repeatedly by the right, accused of being a communist and all this other stuff. Many times that was actually correct, as you can see, you know, by looking at most of the institutions that we have today, the long march through the institutions actually was a really good plan, and it worked because the left is in control of almost every significant institution that you can name today. But it is very ironic that they uh, talked about, you know, how bad persecution was and, uh, you know, how bad it is to silence people. You need to let people speak out, let them have their say and all this kind of stuff. And then the very moment, of course, that they ascend into the positions of power, what do they then say? Anything that we don't like needs to be shut up, needs to be silenced. People need to lose their jobs over it just for speaking out. It's uh, simply outrageous. There are no good um, answers to it either right now. Some of the stuff that I see, people say, well, you know, write to the companies or um, boycott the companies, create your own avenues. Great, yes, do create your own avenues. Others say, well, we need regulation. We need to bring in the government. We need to have the FCC regulate them like they do telephone services. You know, they can't tell us, you know, whether or not we can use a phone. And when we call someone, they can't tell us what we can say or what we can't say. Therefore, we need to make, you know, YouTube or something like that. That isn't going to happen. And even if it is, if you bring in the government, they're going to go down the route to licensure so that you will be able to po podcast or broadcast on YouTube with a license. And then as soon as you get somebody like Obama or Hillary in office, whoever they appoint to be the head of the FCC, it's going to say people like you don't get a license. Thank you very much. You're out. You're done. And you can't talk anyway. 
same situation that we're starting to face right now. So there's no good answers, no easy answers other than continue to use what is available. Be smart about it. Don't be stupid. And press forward. But to close out by coming back to Spinoza here, I think we can see ultimately Spinoza was successful in the way that he was was not by entering into the synagogues, not by entering into the church and making his arguments there. It was by staying outside of those institutions that he was able to have success. So stay outside of the universities. Don't go there. If you do go there, go into something in the hard sciences, go into chemistry, go into physics, but avoid the arts and humanities. That's all I can say. And that's coming from somebody who has multiple degrees in the arts and humanities. I know I've been there. I've seen them. I see what happens see how the brainwashing takes place. So just be aware of all that. Now, you can go in, you know, if you're armored against it ahead of time that you know what to expect, you know what you're going to face, but uh, most people don't know that. So anyway, that's all for today. Thanks.